Spider-Man on PS4 delighted me at nearly every step of its 15-hour adventure, with a surprisingly deep tale focused on the plights of both Spider-Man and Peter Parker. The story combined with exciting web-swinging, web-based gadgets, and web-centric puns made for plenty of great action. Insomnia Games' superhero outing is a thrilling adventure, though one occasionally caught up in a web of overly familiar trappings. At its core, Insomnia Games' adventure strives to make you feel like Spider-Man, and thankfully, it succeeds at nearly every swing across Manhattan's rooftops. Swinging around feels quite simply spectacular. There is definitely a small learning curve, but after learning the basics, it becomes nearly effortless to make Spider-Man look graceful in every swing, leap, and lunge. And man, does it feel good to find the right mix of leaping, swinging, web zipping, and wall running. I've spent hours just webbing around the city and diving off the tops of the Empire State Building or Avengers Tower, enjoying the open city without actually completing tasks. That feeling of fluid movement only really falters in boss battles. Insomniac throws in some big and exciting fights and set pieces full of tense action, and a few harmless quick time events, of course. But the story's biggest boss battles are both front and back loaded, leaving the middle of the story sort of devoid of huge bouts. That pacing feels off, especially when the first couple of boss battles begin to feel like somewhat repetitive pattern recognition. So thankfully, outside of boss battles, Spider-Man offers up a satisfying, varied combat system, though it takes a little longer than I would have preferred for it to show its depth. Spider-Man's mix of gadgets, attacks, and dodges made me feel like I always had control of a battle, and I loved improvising mid-fight with new equipment and moves. Insomniac is known for its wacky arsenals in series like Ratchet and Clank, so it's no surprise Spidey's gadgets are a blast to use. Throwing a trip mine at an enemy to web stick them to the environment, or even better, another baddie is endlessly enjoyable. And discovering how best to deploy web bombs and spider drones in the many stealthy Batman Arkham Asylum-like scenarios is a methodical thrill. Adding to that variety is Spider-Man's wardrobe, a portable closet of unlockable Spidey suits, each with their own power. Each power can be used independently of the suit once it's unlocked, which is a godsend. That said, I largely relied on the first couple of suit powers for almost the entire campaign. The power to fill out your focus meter for special finishers or to restore health was so useful, I didn't want to give it up. And I never felt like the world actually encouraged me to use the other powers. I much more often swapped out the useful suit mods to adapt to specific side challenges more than I ever used different suit powers. Spider-Man's New York is an absolute blast to swing around, in part thanks to how gorgeous the shiny skyscrapers of the city look, particularly on a PS4 Pro, and because of how the Avengers-like theme music swells at just the right moments. The fun of the side objectives scattered throughout the city varies greatly. Taskmaster's tough challenges kept me coming back, while finding landmarks and backpacks was particularly easy and rote, and taking down various enemy outposts could be repetitive and rarely challenging, but still kind of fun. Ah, oh, anyone want to surrender? No? The brilliance of what the world could have been can be seen in a handful of side missions. One optional mission features a familiar villain and ties really nicely into the main story. Another suite of missions forced me to actually have a good sense of New York's neighborhoods. These side missions help bring the world of Spider-Man and its open New York City to life, and I wish there were more of them. I was pleasantly shocked by how relatable Spider-Man's endearing story of mentorship was. The twisted tale of Peter's mentor juxtaposed with his own mentorship of Miles Morales led to great, emotionally poignant moments, in part thanks to how I immediately became as attached to Miles as I did to Peter. I mean, come on, you saved Spider-Man. I'm pretty sure that makes you an official superhero. Meanwhile, Peter's tutelage as a laboratory assistant leads him, and Spider-Man, to make some harrowing choices that are as thrilling as any high-stakes moment in the MCU. Sorry, I have a habit of making bad jokes in tense situations. Insomniac makes really smart, economical use of its villains, so don't expect to be faced with a foe every hour or two. I'm really happy with the restraint Insomniac took, allowing time for its main villains to grow while making the others feel part of a lived-in Spider-Man history. Sometimes, the stakes aren't about stopping Shocker or containing a prison breakout full of Spider-Man's collective supervillain past. Often, the stakes are way more grounded and relatable. Peter and Mary Jane's relationship in particular is one of my favorite romantic storylines in a game ever. That's in large part thanks to the script, as well as the performances by Spidey and MJ actors Yuri Lowenthal and Laura Bailey. Sorry to cook and run. Did... Did you just leave your clothes on the kitchen floor? 
Peter worrying about his text to MJ being misinterpreted is as realistic a nod to modern dating as I could think of, and watching the pair navigate their complicated history and try to figure out what future they may actually have, if any, was just as thrilling to experience as Peter's more heroic endeavors. Why did you ask me here, Pete? You know, just, uh, just dinner between friends. Friends. I wanted Marvel's Spider-Man on PS4 to make me feel like Spider-Man to sail through the high-rises of New York City, to nimbly web up hordes of enemies and tussle with familiar, animal-themed villains. Insomniac Games' first foray into the world of Marvel handily delivers on all of that. What I didn't expect from Spider-Man was to also enjoy being Peter Parker so much. What's your take? Just another night in the city. What's your take? Aside from a couple odd pacing issues, Insomniac has delivered a Spider-Man story that both surprised and delighted me, coupled with gameplay that made me feel like Spider-Man nearly every step of the way. Spider-Man's open world doesn't consistently deliver the thrilling moments of its main campaign, but the foundation laid here is undoubtedly a spectacular time. For more on Marvel's Spider-Man, be sure to check out our interview with Brian Intihar, the game's creative director, and the latest gameplay. And for everything Spider-Man, you're already in the right place, IGN.